Well, one misplaced bell there, not too bad for this point in session. Um, I just want to uh, take one second to just welcome and introduce uh, Jokai Sensei, Sensei Jokai Blackwell, um, someone I'm very happy to call another of my teachers and another of our teachers here at uh, Prajna Heart Zen Center. Jokai is also, um, well, he teaches up at Yokoji uh, Zen Mountain Center at, where he is also the vice abbot. I think uh, a lot of you know him um, and some of you are about to get to know him. And with that, Jokai, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Shiro. And uh, thank you everyone for, for being here and um, committing committing this period of time for for session you know which in the of course in our era of zoom requires um <clears throat> i think extra responsibility on everyone's part for their own practice you know, one of the advantages to living at your code you're living at a zen center is uh when the bell rings you gotta go because you because you live here you know and and so there's uh it's easier to be institutionalized in one sense <laughs> to practice and when when we're uh out in the world or in our homes then um it's really much more is is up to us i i spoke with a friend recently who practices in uh japan who who was telling me that uh a senior a teacher had told him when you're alone, you should still practice as if a, a senior monk is watching. Uh, that's like the mindset of, <laughs> of being alone. It's like carrying that sense of uh, responsibility. So to, to join for a session over several days is, uh, is quite a commitment. And I, I applaud you for doing so. I looked at the schedule and, and saw that it was uh, very rigorous and so much like a a regular session so thank you for your your efforts so far and and of course you're in uh, uh capable hands with uh with the leadership in in the session i understand that uh shiro raised a, a, a koan up uh, with the initial talk and um <clears throat> roshi uh gave a talk on uh how to approach and uh realize during session so i thought i might Try and add, continue to add some variety for the talks here to bring up some uh, some words of uh, Master Dogen's in in uh, along the lines of the practice of zazen. After all, session is um, a key component of of session is zazen. Much more zazen than is usual in our daily experience. And if we can really get that core strong of the mastery of still sitting, then really that is, can be actualized in, in, in every activity. You know, just to get that, that base Zazen, the correct attitude um, for sitting, if that is strong and that is really realized, then naturally that is being expressed. That's what's being transmitted in our everyday life whatever that activity was much more natural functioning possible once those fundamentals are are achieved um of course i'm sure you're pretty much all familiar with master dogen and and his uniqueness in the sense of being a uh a wonderfully accomplished zen teacher but also a great writer and uh also very smart and re really, you know, a renaissance uh, man for the ages that he was able to produce such a quality of, of work. And like with many, I think uh, uh, many of his best writings, or at least the ones that I, I appreciate the most, I guess, or many people appreciate the most, were ones that were completed early on his, uh, on his return from China after uh, receiving transmission in the Soto lineage, coming back and then really being uh, having a lot of energy and a, and a lot of juice too, and uh, before before moving up to uh, Aheji. 
I, I wanted to bring up some a passage from uh, Ben Doa, which is commonly translated as a wholehearted practice of the way. So that, that, that really right there is, is the practice of session. It is a time for concentrated effort in the wholehearted practice of the way. Here we could bring all our energies to bear for a concerted amount of time. That tends to be much, much uh, more doable if we have a series of days, several days, that we know that this will be a concentrated period of effort then we can uh, ready the mind for, the, for that. <clears throat> okay, so Ben Doa, he begins and says, all Buddha Tathagatas who directly transmit inconceivable Dharma and actualize supreme perfect enlightenment have a wondrous way, unsurpassed and unconditioned. Only Buddhas transmitted to Buddhas without veering off. Self-fulfilling samadhi is its standard. Sitting upright, practicing Zen, is the authentic gate to the unconfined realm of this samadhi. So that wonderful last sentence there. Uh, sitting upright, practicing Zen, is the authentic gate to the unconfined realm of this samadhi. I'm sure there's many years of strong uh, experience of Zazen uh, represented here. And, and perhaps if, uh, some people who are newer to the practice, but still have um, you know, a few hundred flying hours of Zazen under, under their belt so far, right? In Zazen, uh, we can take that word translated as simply to sit, Zen, the practice of Zen in, in sitting. Zen is this uh, wonderfully misunderstood word or enigmatic word yeah, it's, that's been adopted into, into our culture, a translation of Chan from the Chinese or Dhyana back in um, either Sanskrit or Pali, I don't, I don't remember which Sanskrit. We could say contemplative absorption sitting zen sitting in in absorption of our being now we really stress the importance in the zen tradition of course of of a lot of still sitting of zazen why why do we do so and right here master dogan says sitting upright practice in zen is the authentic gate to the confined realm of this samadhi. In another, in another writing, uh, Master Dogen is uh, asked by somebody, a practitioner, when he's recently back from China, um, and he's asked, there are, there are many different gates to the way. Why, why do you promote Zazen so much? And this was true in 13th century Japan, that there were many gates to the way. And certainly in uh, in our corner of the globe, right? Maybe on the west coast of the United States and California, or perhaps some of you are outside in, in different states. And yet we don't have to go far to find different ways to practice. Uh, particularly since the advent of the internet, I mean, there's more ways than you can than you can than you can imagine. And many different and um, well-tested, time-honored methods and approaches to to spiritual practice so it's not that zen buddhism has the has the right way of a kind of a the monopoly on on truth you know i was reminded the other day but i think it's an old monty python sketch where somebody gets to uh gets to heaven and and has felt like he's lived a very good life and he gets there and he's not allowed in and he said, wait, uh, and he said, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong religion. And he said, oh, no, w which one was right? And, and, and St. Peter uh, just says, to, to, turns out it was the Mormons who were right. You know, but you could pick one and say any, any, any one right there. And the guy's like, oh, no, you know, I picked the wrong one. 
So, you know, that brings up that absurdity of any tradition having any, any monopoly on, um, on the way, right? And yet, if we look at this question, when the practitioner asks, there are, there are many different gates to enter the way, why choose Zazen? Master Dogen replied, because it's the front gate. It's the front gate. It is the direct way, the authentic direct way to realization. No method required. No belief system needed. No, uh, nothing that needs to be fleshed out. But rather, the body is arranged in the posture. The breathing is uh, uh, careful with our breathing and our posture. We go over these basics and sit down. And at that very moment, the Buddha way is directly transmitted. And right here at Yokoji, we're currently in the in the training period. So at the noon service, we we chant Hakuin's song of Zazen, which is something of our says something of our hybrid uh, Soto and Rinzai lineages, in that we use a uh, a writing from a great Rinzai master, uh, Hak Hakuin Zen. And in that, in that song of Zazen, he says, even those who sit just once will see all their evil karma erased. Wow. I remember when I first heard that, I thought, oh, I'm not sure about that. You know, <laughs> even those who sit just once will see all, like you're done the first time you sit. You know, but, and yet it is, in, it is intrinsically so. But phenomenally, you know, relatively, it takes practice. It takes a while. It takes a uh, session. It takes daily practice. It takes the years of study to really to bring that into full realization and to be able to actualize that, to be able to sit in this authentic way. So Zazen then is, for, is this front gate. No middle man, no middle person required. But the first time that we sit down, the way is manifest. You know, we say, what is this way? We could word down, we could say reality, our life, this profound mystery that each one of us is. You know, sometimes we'll talk about my life, your life, or their life, and that's uh really just a, um, a way of talking about things like a temporary expedient. When we really look at it, we don't have any possession of this life. There's just life. We are life, each one of us, living the same life in a uniquely different way. And yet that same awareness, the awareness that one is that animate one of the right now, is the one awareness, is the shared realization. As human beings, of course, we're, we're very good at obscuring that intrinsic truth. We're, we're good at obscuring that. You know, we, we discover this in our, in our practice when we, when we learn how to meditate, of course. Most of our time is uh, involved in what is the relationship to thinking mind. You know, how is this good zazen? Is this bad zazen? Oh, I was thinking a lot. This was happening. That was happening. You know, that's a, that's a natural part of uh, learning the art of the craft of sitting. But ultimately, zazen has got nothing to do with the content of mind, whether the mind is busy or whether the mind is, is quiet. At the beginning, he says, all Buddha Tathagatas, all, all thus come awakened ones. That is everyone. You know, the Buddha, at the, it is said after his enlightenment, said, I, all beings, the great earth simultaneously attained the way. So we can rest assured that each one of us is included in, that, in the Buddha's enlightenment. All Buddhas, all awakened ones who have thus come. The, the, the difference here, the difference between being a realized Buddha or not, is that word realization. 
how, how much is it realized? And that is our practice. That's our practice in session. And then much more than that, beyond session and our everyday activity. How is this life that we live, how is it realized? How in alignment are we with the reality of all things, seeing things as they are? Again, our great challenge as human beings is we're, we're, we're very adept at building a vision of reality or an idea, a preferable reality between the ears and then superimposing that one on top of the world it of the world of it should be or it could be or or etc cetera, etc cetera. we're all very familiar with that that is uh, of course a, a, a part of the human condition session and zazen is the great dissolving agent for that extra identity and that fiction of reality, which we tend to superimpose over the top of life. The, the, the wonderful pace of sitting, you know, somebody once described it to me as the, the glacial pace of Zazen, right? Like there are other ways to try and experience, to disrupt the uh, deluded mind. You can try all kinds of things. I've tried a few things. I'm sure that's sure you have too, right? Over the years. But what is better than the glacial practice of still sitting? The body mind enjoys the action of sitting, Zaza. You know, when we see those statues of the Buddha, like we have, you may have one in your in your home. There's one on the altar in the Buddha hall here at Yokoji, and it's the classic one where the Buddha has the, the gentle half smile, just the, the, the soft smile on the lips. That, that is the smile of what Dogen calls here, you know, self-fulfilling samadhi. That is the body-mind confirmed as its original awareness or original nature. So it is, you know, it's really essential in our art of, of Zazen to really firmly make that shift where the musings and ponderings and tinkering with the circumstances of our, the present challenges of our life are allowed to be uh, dropped off or to be put aside. I, for, for myself, that's the most important aspect of, of still sitting. What do we do once the bell is struck, we've settled down, and then we have this 30 minutes, however, you know, whatever that length of time is, how is that time? What is going on during that time? You know, that's, that's really where the, the rubber makes, uh, meets the road. I brought up at the beginning how we have real responsibility in a, in a, in a Zoom session, particularly where no one may be watching, you know, in order to like do our best with our practice. Well, whether it at a temple, wherever we might be, it might be in the most fiercest temple in, uh, in Northern Japan, or we could be in, uh, in San Francisco or, or New York or wherever in a, in a training temple or at home inside our own heads, <laughs> no one's watching. That's always, that's always up to each one of us. But there is, there is true, there is great opportunity there, great opportunity to, to practice diligently. Sitting upright, practicing Zen, the authentic gate to the unconfined realm of this samadhi. And we, we naturally, as we slow down and observe the precautions of session, where talking is, is minimized and distraction is, is minimized, then samadhi comes into realization, the energy of one-pointed concentration practice, doing one thing, taking care of one dharma, matching things, 
directly and simply. There's great skill in the way that session has been handed down to us in terms of schedule. Every every year here at Yokoji, a new training period comes around. We have to create a new training schedule, and um, it takes about 30 seconds. We just change the year and the date. <laughs> give it a quick proof you know but for the most part it, it hasn't it, it hasn't changed very much in fact the same friend who i have in uh, japan who i'm in contact with he told me that they were they were thinking about changing the the schedule there for the first time and it's due to warming due, due to the climate changing and it's becoming intolerably hot and but they were very cautious about changing the, the Zen schedule because they've had the same schedule for 700 years. So they're, they're, they're loath to tinker with that. It, it, it's worked well. For, but in the true Zen spirit of things, if they do change it, they're just going to get up earlier because it'll be cooler in the morning. So that, that, that puts a nice Zen spin on, on if they do make a change. But, but we, can, we can trust this container of Session and these teachings of Zazen in that they have worked wonderfully well for centuries and millennia and have proven to be effective in bringing all comers to, to realization. This realization of... Uh, as he says here, those who directly transmit inconceivable dharma and actualize supreme perfect enlightenment have a wonderful way, a wondrous way, unsurpassed and unconditioned. Now, unsurpassed, what, what can, really, what can surpass this? Quite, quite literally, what reality can surpass this one? This is naturally un, unsurpassable. Now, if we have all kinds of, uh, if we're confused in body and mind and have all kinds of judgments about this reality as is, that distort or demean this reality, then we don't see that unsurpassed nature. If we can let go of our ideas and notions around this reality of this life as it is, then we open the gate to seeing that it is unsurpassed. The next part, an unconditioned, this is, uh, again, the essential practice of sitting, to be unconditioned. We are all conditioned as human beings. I'm, I'm horribly conditioned. All kinds, of, all kinds of things have happened to me. I'm sure all kinds of things have happened to you. Some are conscious, some are unconscious. There's a great varied spectrum amongst us and amongst human beings. Those who have had pretty much an easy time of it and it's uh, run along quite well, thanks very much for the most part. And on the other side of things, people who have suffered um, incredible traumas and everything in between. But no matter the particular unique uh, things that have happened, we are all part of, the, of that human condition. We are all, we are all conditioned. When we sit, much better to be, or actually essential, to be unconditioned. In another place, Master Dogen says, Zazen is unconstructedness in stillness. To be still, and then to be unconstructed. That, that's one of those words that when you type it, Google or, or, or Microsoft Word will say, that's not a word. You know, that's not a good, it's not a, that's not a word. It'll suggest some other word that has nothing in, because it's not a common word that we use, right? Unconstructedness. What in the heck is that? But we can really see into that in our practice, the way that we, again, construct our self-identity, the way that we're constructing an image of the world as we navigate it. Not that that is wrong, that is 
the software we have as human beings. That's how we live. That's how we navigate this mysterious reality. We have this construction. But that construction does not define us. We can see in our practice that the name, the history, and all of the accruements of our me life are ephemeral and indistinct and nebulous and often dissatisfying and certainly impermanent. So why not let those that aspect fall off and go beyond that sense of living a conditioned life? That's the opportunity of Zazen each time that we sit. But it requires us, it requires effort and our watchfulness and the and uh, strong concentration of awareness. Yeah, as we know, session is effort. It takes effort. You know, I think about it sometimes at Yokoji. It's like an oven for seven days. You know, we're all like these uh, blobs of cookie dough in in the uh, <laughs> like on a tray that you just slot in the hall. You know, or how how we are here. 15, 16 people, like little like uh, like cookies. You put them in the oven, you know, for a few days. Let let the heat rise. Let things uh, cook a little bit. Anything that really, you know, as the temperature rises, everything that's extra really starts to rise up. Everything starts to come up. That's why we have the interview at Dokusan and such in, in session. The things that that things that come up. That need to be addressed, but it's bringing it's bringing heat and bringing us to this uh, still point. In order to really to get to the root of what this practice really is, to, and that practice is really to understand, to take our place alongside the Buddha Tathagatas, who directly transmit inconceivable dharma. Now that can sound abstract or somehow out of reach to, to us. How do we transmit inconceivable dharma? And yet we are always transmitting inconceivable dharma. There is nothing but inconceivable dharma. But what is it that we are transmitting? How are we transmitting? in our body and mind what are we transmitting to our in our homes to our to, to to our family to our friends to our work colleagues and what what is being what is being shared <clears throat> unconstructedness and stillness it's a wonderful thing when we can really sit and do nothing at all it sounds so it sounds like a, an easy and an, an easy thing to do, but as many of us have found in our years of practice, doing nothing is surprisingly difficult. We'd rather do something. We'd rather run some subroutines in the background, run a few things, do a few things in order to be stay entertained, in order to give us something to do. When we really, when we really sit and we're unconstructed, it doesn't really matter how long the, the, the period of time is, whether it's a 30 minute set or how long that is. it might matter to our knees, you know, it matters to the body. That's why the periods are only a certain amount of time. But if we really enter into Zazen, then we can realize and see the timeless quality of just this. The time where there is nothing to do, nowhere to go, nothing to construct, nothing to attain, and nothing to lack to, to go. Anything that you can lose in the practice of Zazen 
is extra. You don't need it. We can really sit and allow all things to be lost. Let everything go that can, that is non-essential. Ideas about me and you and the world and our place in it and whatever is going on. Those daily challenges, you know, I'm sure your life is like mine, very busy. 101, 1,001 things to take care of. Doing, 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 doing. What a gift. And again, I applaud you for giving yourself and others the gift of your presence at session. A time to let the endless complications rest and to enter directly into this wholehearted practice of the way. And we oughtn't to be confused about what this wholehearted practice of the way is. It's this. It's always this. Right now, sitting, listening, speaking. Perhaps later, a nice lunch. Maybe some short time for rest. Maybe a nap on the couch. Wholehearted practice of couch napping. Highly recommended in a in a Zoom session. I hope that's not specifically precluded by the precautions. Okay, all right, that's allowed. Good, good. And then to return to zazen in the afternoon, the wholehearted practice of returning at the sound of the bell, sitting, getting up, walking. You know, to really to bring the eye of realization to see that none of these activities are different than any other. When we, we only see the forms, when we only look into this relative change in world, we just see the forms. We just see the world of preference and the world of difference. But in Sashin and in Zazen, we cultivate and see the world of sameness. That this realization now doesn't move that this awareness that each one of us is never changes, is unperturbed and timeless, without beginning or end, cannot be grasped, defined, known. And yet everyone without exception is that. Later, I don't get very far with Ben Dower, excuse me, but later um, he says here, from the first time you meet a teacher without engaging in incense offering, bowing, chanting, saying Buddha's name, repentance, or reading sutras, you should just wholeheartedly sit and drop away body and mind. So even though we may, you know, we may have all of these other we have all of these other practices. We don't, we don't mistake the, these, these practices for, for the point. You know, I remember being here at Yokoji many years ago when after being here two or three weeks, I had ideas about how the place could, how we could do it better and, and how, you know, what, what could be changed and what parts are unnecessary. And then after about a decade, I realized, oh, everything that is done is all in order, is, is wonderfully orchestrated in order to cultivate this container. You know, a safe, still, supportive container, not an easy container. Practice isn't, isn't easy. Again, it requires it requires effort and it requires courage to confront these, these aspects of self. And is this difficult karma, for want of a better word, that rises up in this practice? It requires, uh, it requires courage. But to be steadfast, to continue to show up, 
to each activity, to each practice in a straightforward way where it's a matter of what is this now and then match this directly. And we're all perfectly equipped in order to do, to do that. You know, it's not complicated. Our practice isn't, isn't complicated. It's straight, it's straightforward. Before doing all of these things, you should just wholeheartedly sit and drop off body and mind. Master Dogen here is referring to his time training with uh, his teacher, Tendo Nyojo in China. When Tendo Nyojo in the meditation hall scolded a, a sleeping monk by saying, Zazen isn't sleeping, it's uh, dropping off body and mind. And at that moment, on hearing those words, Master Dogen understood dropping off body and mind. We, we talk about my body, my mind, me, my this, my that, yours, a thousand ways that we uh, separate and understand the world of difference. And to drop off body and mind is to go beyond, is to really see beyond that those differences and rather recognize the sameness, the same awareness that each one of us already is, always was. To return to the, the beginning and know it for the first time. I have some we have some time where perhaps I could open it up to any uh, any any questions or a comment. Yes, thank you, Sensei. Um, you can raise your digital hand or your real hand, <laughs> and I will try to manage it. Or you can uh, simply unmute yourself and go if it's not too much chaos. So um, please take advantage of this opportunity. And you know, if you don't, I'll call on you anyway, so. <laughs> Who, which kernel of popcorn will pop first? I have a comment. Go ahead, Mel. Yeah. Kazumi. Hi, uh, my name is Kazumi. Thank you so much for your talk. Um, yeah. The thing that re that really stood out for me that I love a metaphor you used is that um, session is a dissolving agent of like the stories you have in your mind, the, the stuff, the anxiety, the everything, um, because it really every time I do session, um, I come in with a million things, all the things I want to get done in my life beforehand, just different things spinning in my head. And then by about today, so day three, Three, um, I think. I think, I think um, it it it. First off, I think why was I thinking all that stuff? Like why was I worried about that? Like things start to kind of ease, yeah. and then right, it's like what? Why was I spinning on that one? Like I don't have to do that. If I just do nothing, it'll be fine. But the other thing that happens is it even becomes a little bit hard to think, <laughs> and I don't know if that's from being tired, <laughs> but like. It does, yeah. like, it's like my brain isn't operating at the same speed in a way. Um, mm -hmm. So it, anyway, it's just like, it's just fascinating to watch the kind of storyline or the, the path of, of my thinking over a period of really sitting, sitting a lot. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for, thank you for sharing that. That's, you know, for, for myself, it's um, often coming up to a seven day session I, I I would be in, I'd be untruthful if I said I was always looking forward to doing them. You know, it's like oh no, here we go again. Session number whatever it is, I, <laughs> and yet it always after after several days after that initial settling down is is taken care of when the mind settles, and and real concentration comes to the fore and this, you know, the more choppy water kind of banal thinking and spinning about this and that falls off then you know it's a wonderful it's a it's a wonderful uh, it's a wonderful time 
And it's always been for, for myself, it's like session is the time where we the opportunity for, for genuine transformation, the opportunity for real depth, you know, to, to disrupt things on a deeper level, that that's what session is irreplaceable for. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think Ken um, was uh, was next. Ken, go for it, Ken. Yeah. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Sensei. It's wonderful to see you. Uh, yeah, it was also to wonderful too. to to uh, listen to Tenshin uh, yesterday, and of course Shiro on Thursday. Um, what's happened for me is. I go back to yesterday's talk where Tenshin was talking about taking the thoughts and putting it over here. Uh, you know, in my in my my mind, I imagine a bucket. And <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I I've noticed my bucket is still relatively empty. <laughs> Those thoughts. If, if I haven't been putting them in that bucket so as well as um, I would have liked to. And yet, listening to you today talking about session being just this intense metaphor for what is, just reminds me that even though I would like to fill that bucket, because I haven't been filling that bucket is my reality. And so I appreciate that. <laughs> this is not something I have to do or accomplish because I'm gonna get a gold star on my report card because I've filled my bucket of thoughts. And so for that, I feel relieved. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't feel so judgmental and I am more able to be less harsh on myself and by extension, I hope on others. So again, I find that again, um, cause Kazumi was talking about at this point in a sit, you know, things sort of kind of either settle or become a little bit more available which, which is what I like to see it as, I'm becoming more available to myself because I'm not mm -hmm. doing things to prop up who I think I am. And so I still want to fill my bucket with thoughts. And if at the end of session tomorrow, I still have only two or three in there, well, I only have two or three in there. <laughs> and for that, I'm grateful. Again, thank you, Sensei. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. It's it's always difficult with um, with words, of course, to uh, speak to this uh, relationship to thought. You know, and when when you bring in uh, the metaphor of having a a bucket next to you, it came into my mind. You said, you know, fill in the bucket. I, I was thinking, well, if you do that, when your bu your bucket's full. You, you might want to put a bathtub next to you because you know you could fill a bathtub too and you could just go on go on from there um i like hey, i read something recently which would um actually probably some time ago but uh uh about the relationship to thought that suzuki roshi wrote where he said when um when thoughts come uh, welcome them but don't serve them tea <laughs> and it's very uh, it's a beautiful statement if you if you look at it you know we're, we all sit with this thinking mind and in some ways we we give it perhaps we give it too much a, a, attention you know we get ourselves into a tussle with thought and how we should be um managing that during zazen but if we're if we're really able to uh to sit and to cease manipulating our relationship to thought, then thought is, is no longer the same problem. 
just don't serve those thoughts T. Whether the mind, if the mind's quiet, the mind is quiet. If the mind is busy, then uh, let it be, let it be busy. It's the reaching in and trying to do something that tends to um, leave us at the point of needing a bucket, mm. right? Because then it's a project. I've got too many thoughts. What do I do with thoughts? How about whether as many or there's few or there's none or there's uh, a multitude, just allow them to be, just allow that to be as it is. No, of course that doesn't preclude that when we're very busy in the mind, particularly at the start of session or times of emotional uh, disruption, you know, then it's useful to bring in, uh, you know, whether it's a breath awareness practice or another concentration practice, calm practice works in this way. It gives the mind something to, to work on. That's certainly a part of our practice. But for the time where we're just doing zazen, just sitting, what let go of that any kind of manipulation with thinking? Mm. You know that that watchful attention is don't reach in there and add, and don't reach in there and push away. If you just put, you just touch in that sense then, you know, we're captivated by it typically. I like that. There's, uh, you know, the old story from Greek mythology where, um, is he, is he Ulysses, the one who's returning home? It's like the multi-decade journey, journey, you know, and he's, uh, they go past the, the island to have the sirens. And the, um, but you know, if you heard them, they drive 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 you crazy. So the crew, they all put balls of wax in their ears so they can't, they don't have to listen to the sirens. But so Odysseus, yeah, he's he he asks, he, he doesn't want to miss it. He wants to experience it. So skillfully he says, tie me to the mast so that I can't take the ship down. Sometimes it's like that in Sashin. It's like being <laughs> Right, you 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 sit. You just tied to the mast. You can't bowl your ears up. You can't do anything about what's going on. You cannot move and directly experience it. Kind of a strong metaphor, I realized when I just said that. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, we've got Chalet tied to the mast in the other room. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um just okay just for frame of uh just chalet is our tenzo uh, for the few of us here and uh, she's, yeah she's off cooking um just for reference uh ken has been uh leading body and breath work for a short period ah. of the afternoon and it's funny you were mentioning the 700 year old schedule and and just you know changing the date and hitting print and essentially uh, it took me slightly longer than 30 seconds because i needed to change the name and the date mm -hmm. and then we did because of the zoom nature of this session add in a uh, body work uh, segment in the yeah afternoon. but in true zoom fashion we did it by adding a half an hour exactly <laughs> anyway um but ken thank you so much for the work yeah. we're doing there you know because that's that's another form of um just letting things be and letting things settle and mm -hmm. likewise though i'm on melanie uh, melissa's computer she's been the jisha and the eno so when she talks about things to think about you know there's 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 that part of the practice too yeah. like functioning in a position and making your voice ring you know or taking care of the interview line and she's also working on her cons and doing zazen so i just want to acknowledge you for that as well. yeah um valerian i, I remember sorry go ahead <laughs> oh yeah go ahead no you go no, no. 
I was just calling. Yeah, well, I was just gonna. I, I just remembered when I when I arrived first came to your coach. Yeah, I remember um, doing a, starting a session, and then it's, toward the end, Shinko, who's the head monk, who's one of Tenshin Roshi's successors. He was um, he was a head monk at the time, and he said, "Okay, you're you're going to be Doan now. We're going to train you to be Doan. So you're going to hit all of the bells and 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 such." And I'm like, "Oh gosh, you know, I didn't really want to do it." And um, I said, "Well, uh, yeah, okay. Well, how how long do I how long do I have to do that for?" And he said, uh, I, two years or something. <laughs> <laughs> do it for like two years, and I'm like." Oh, yeah, I've been here about four days, you know, so I was like, oh, oh, okay, you know, and then, because that was like the, the way to learn to eventually become, become Eno, yeah, but that was, that was a reality check. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I, I realized I, you're, you're Dawn and Eno, you know. she's Dawn, Eno, and Jisha, and Lori's Jikido, and I, I, other things too. I have. empathize, I can, I can connect. Yeah, so, um, Anyway, a lot of people doing good good work on all parts of the screen here. Valerian? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Uh, since I, so one of the things that um, uh, resonated was when you were talking about uh, entering the, the space anew and kind of seeing how things could, could change. And um, it, it kind of matched my experience with with Zoom and I'm like, you know, it's, it's all just these two, these little 2D squares, right? It's like, it's not even 3D. I can't see you in holograms or VR. Or, and then I'm like, well, that's just, it's, it's a representation, right? And it just struck me that that's pretty much what life is, right? It's like these really <laughs> crappy representations of what the thing actually um, actually, is, so that was that was very helpful for me. Thank you. Yeah. It's not all crappy, though, is it? <laughs> no, uh, never full resolution. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, Larian. More Zazen will take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. Just, just yeah. keep upping the resolution. Um, Valerian's joining us from Minneapolis, right, Valerian? Oh wow! Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. A little chilly today, but thankfully calm. Yes, thankfully so. Hmm. All right, gang. Any, anything else? Yeah. Any any final questions? Uh, Lori. Yeah. Akasha. Hey, thanks for being here with us today. We so appreciate your support and and. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Filling in all these different places that we haven't haven't remembered, and you're helping us remember all these different things. And one of the things I really loved was your sort of filing system. What I see is sort of a filing system of the uh, preferences and the differences. And I just, to me, it just it's really wonderful to recognize that as um, as levels of awareness, you know, and so basic. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. And I, I wanted yeah. to, I wanted to what Valerian was saying. I wanted to quote Yogi Budget. He called, he said, "Life is a two-star hotel." Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> is that we, right? have, we have access to so much more if, if we simply choose to raise our consciousness and let all this go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw, I saw on the, I saw some time ago on. The, Many of you might have seen, you know, John Oliver has that show on HBO and it was uh, some time ago, but somebody had, um, he was talking about the internet and how somebody had given the Grand Canyon a one-star Yelp review. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he was like, what were you, what do you want? You know, what, 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 what were you expecting? What, what, it's so expected, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, and Akasha has her cheating work over her shoulder, too. So, <laughs> oh, no. yeah. we need some more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's interesting because I'm just looking at the screen, and just so you know who you're 
reaching uh, Joe Kai, we have New York, San Diego, San Francisco, Austin, Boulder, um, somewhere out in Riverside County, right, Mark? Um, we have LA, we have uh, Altadena, North mm. and NorCal, yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, nice. Nice reach, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, well, that's one of the great silver linings of the, our our Zoom age, you know. And now, now it's here. It's here to stay. So, you know, that's uh, that's a that's a really uh, nice thing that we've added to uh, Sangha practice. And looking forward to see how that all fits together once we get back to in person too. We'll yeah. be firing on all fronts. Hey, Paul question for you because uh, Paul is in the chaplaincy program and mm. you're, you're doing a lot of uh, inquiry into different faiths and paths. Um, how what was your reaction to Joe Kai, you know, saying Zen does not own the truth? I'm just curious if you had any thoughts on that. That's right. I was, um, and, and thank you very much. Uh, Joe Guy, for your um, for your chat and presentation, and I was uh, mm -hmm. when you said yes, it, it doesn't own the truth. I, I couldn't agree more with that. Um, I need to sit with that it is the front gate um, <laughs> to the house. Uh, that I thought that was a, a good image. Um, I think it cuts directly, and um, and so I am just wrestling with it being the front gate. Um, so um, I think I may sit with that about who's watching the front gate. And <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> you know, you know, the gate's extra. There's no yeah. gate, right? So yeah, Just, <laughs> you know, kick the gate down if you don't need it. <laughs> thank you so much for your wisdom. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Hey, Jacob, any comments about the gate? <laughs> I, th I think I, I have to sit with the gate for a while too. Um, it's, um, you know, what always happens with me is it, it's, um, and Joe Kai, thanks. Thanks so much for today's talk. Um, it, it, it always sinks into me later, you know, in, in about an hour, um, you know, I'll, 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 I'll burst into tears or start laughing. So, something that happened. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it there because I'm gonna have to percolate on on the whole talk for a while. But thank you so much. Thank you. I won't be overly directive and call on everyone, but uh, any last hands or thoughts or questions, Sharma. <laughs> <laughs> I just. I just loved hearing the front gate because it just, it makes so much sense and it's so simple and it carries so much meaning in so many different ways. So I thought it was hilarious and true. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I was meant to be bringing up Ben Doer, and I think I took that from Fuka Zazengi. But <laughs> I, think, I think that's there. I'm not sure. But yeah, it's a wonderful uh, teaching. Hey, King. Thank you so much, uh, Sensei. And um, oh, yeah. if, Roshi's, if Roshi's in your shot, and many thanks to you as well, Roshi. Um, he's around. I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure if it's in his shop. Yeah. And uh, Keeson, I, I see Keeson, some part of Keeson. There, there she is. <laughs> Thank you for your help on that side. Um, all of your contribution to this session is um, immeasurable. And we're just so grateful to have you as arrows <laughs> in the Dharma quiver. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe I could just... Uh, just read the last line from Ben Doa, as I didn't get very far with it, but I, I find this to be very encouraging. So in, in closing, know that even if all the Buddhas have attained directions 
as innumerable as the sands of the Ganges, exerted their strength and with the Buddha's wisdom tried to measure one person's zazen, they would not be able to fully comprehend it. Can you repeat that one more time? We had a little sound lag there. Yeah. Oh, I'll go because of our poor internet connection. Know that even if all the Buddhas of the ten directions, as innumerable as the sands of the Ganges, exerted their strength and with the Buddha's wisdom tried to measure merit of one Pazen, they would not be able to fully comprehend it. Thank you. you can't comprehend the power. We can't comprehend the power of this zazen or this practice. There's no way to quantify it. But through this practice, we are irrevocably transformed. And those ripples go out in the ten directions, in every direction. It's, uh, we don't know where those ripples land, but that's not important. What's important is we make the best offering that we can. Thank you for your thank you for listening. Thank you for your attending today. I appreciate it. Thank you. I vow to attain.